Hello guys, welcome to my channel Learn Tech. This is Sandeep Kohl here. So today's uh, topic which I am going to take is on BMC Remedy single sign-on. So what we will see here that uh, this BMC Remedy single sign-on is one another application from BMC. So uh, the main purpose of this application is to authenticate people who are basically logged in uh, or who are logging into different applications. So we will see how we can access the console of the single sign-on, how we configure different type of authentications in it and how we can uh, you know basically test it, how we configure different URLs in it. So this is what we are going to see in today's video. So um, let's get started. Okay, so now to uh, you know uh, log into your uh, RSSO, you need to first of all have the um, this BMC RSSO URL. So it it uh, has an you know this is called admin URL uh, for the RSSO. So where you have uh, you have install installed the uh, you know single sign on server, so you can access this URL from there. We will not go deep much detail in the URL. It's quite easy to access it now. <coughs> So what I will do, I will log into this RSSO. You can see here I have provided my credentials. So these are the uh, there is a particular uh, you know uh, admin uh, for the RSSO. So we have to give the uh, permissions to that particular user. And uh, by default, when you install RSSO, you will get this uh, admin available into the RSSO. So you can further add more admin uh, to the you know RSSO system. now. So now, uh, what basically is RSSO? So let me give you an example. For example, we use uh, multiple applications from, uh, you know, uh, from BMC. Like we are using uh, CMDB, we are using um, uh, Midtier, we are using some other um, applications like BMC Client Manage uh, Management, ADDM. So these all applications, you know, uh, by default, every application has a own authentication mechanism for example if we take an example of ITSM it has its own uh, you know uh, place where you can create a credentials for a user like we do normally in the people form or user form then the user is authenticated to log now uh, when you are working in a big organization or when you are working in an organization where the volume of your users is huge and there are security uh, you know reasons that you want uh, users to be authent authenticated from a particular um, you know application or a particular domain then this rsso comes in picture <coughs> by default you have every uh, you know by default every application has its own authentication mechanism so now imagine in a company where you have around 50 100 applications installed and people are accessing it so what companies do what organizations do they uh, develop a single mechanism of authentication and then every application who is basically uh, you know implemented there or who, or who uh, which is ba basically used by the people so they uh, what they do they authenticate every application from this uh, mechanism then it becomes a you know unified uh, way of authenticating people in, in an organization so then uh, this you know rss comes in picture second thing is like for example, if you are using, uh, let's suppose uh, you are an employee and you, are, you have to you know, access 10 applications. So you need to remember around 10 credentials for those applications. Yeah, you can create a single uh, you know, user or a credential for all of them, but you know different um, applications have different mechanisms. For example, some will accept you know, uh, certain characters, some will not accept um, you know, um, you know, uh, lower characters, all lower characters. So these are different you know, things in a different application. But now when you bring in a single authentication mechanism, then every application you will be authenticated with that particular <coughs> application. Now coming on to the main topic, so which is RSSO. So this was just a background of you know why we have RSSO, why we are using it. Now 
for the RSSO for Remedy RSSO. This is the console which you get when you basically uh, install it on your uh, you know system, and then when you have to you know uh, add people to the. So there are different uh, different you know uh, sections here, so different uh, mechanisms of authentication. Now the basic configuration which we can do is this cookie domain. So you have to mention the main domain of your organization here. So which is currently mentioned here, you have to mention the main uh, domain of, for example, if there's a company uh, ABCD, so it will be abcd.com. Similarly, you have to mention the uh, domain, the cookie domain of your organization. Then the session timings, you know that maximum session timing, uh, then admin session timing, admin lockout thresholds. So these are some information, uh, you know, you can mention here. These are the basic or general information which we do. This is just, a, you know, settings of this particular console. Similarly, log level you can define here. Uh, if you want to debug the RSSO, then how you can define the log. So you can here, by default it's info, it will give you some basic information. But if you want to debug it more, then set this to debug mode and then click save. Then it goes into the debug mode and when anybody tries to authenticate, you will uh, be able to capture each and every step of the authentication in the logs. Then uh, these are the just basic settings of this. Then if I go here in advance, then again, the, you need to mention the cookies, back channel. Then, um, okay, this is uh, SML. Um, if you want um, to use the um, SML service provider, then you can mention it here like um, what, like the ID, URL, key store file, but we'll not go into detail uh, into this. We'll go to the actual part. Okay, so let me go here. To relims. Okay, so now when you want to add um, an authentication, first of all, you need to add this. You need to add the relims. Okay, so le let's suppose I'm clicking on this relim. Then I will say relim ID, then application domains. Okay. Application domains means how many domains I want to authenticate with this particular system. Then you can uh, mention all the domains. Here. But if you want to uh, um, authenticate all of them, you can mention a star here. Like there is already a configuration here where we uh, are doing that. Then you have to mention the uh, tenant for, for this domain identifier. Tenants we configure here. If I go here, let me go here. <coughs> So here I can mention my tenant. I can add my tenant. Tenant is just a name of the company, host name. You have to mention the uh, the um, host name of the application which is being authenticated here. Okay. So here you will mention the host name. This is just a title name, and then uh, the description. It can be just an information for your own purpose. Then once you do that, then in the realm you can provide that. So let me again click on add realm, and then here I will mention the uh, tenant name. Then after logout URL means that if somebody is logged out from the system, let's suppose after I am authenticated into application, I am done with my work. So when I will log out, because what here we, we are doing, we are redirecting uh, from RSSO to the application URL. So what will uh, RSSO do? Our RSSO will <coughs> call the application URL. It will take out your credentials. It will log into that application. It will authenticate you using a token. Once you are authenticated, then you will log in into the application. For example, if you are using ITSM, you will go to the ITSM application. Then once you are done with your work, you will definitely will log out. So once you log out, so you can mention the URL on which you want the users to be to land when you, once you are logging out. Then uh, similarly, once we add this um, uh, realm here, then <coughs> so you can define here the session quota. So if you define session quota, for example, 10, 20, 50, whatever count, then automatically it will invalidate the older sessions on reaching that particular quota. For example, I have set this to 10. So then um, let's suppose the 11th user logs. In. So it will invalidate the um, old sessions on reaching this particular quota. Okay. Now uh, this is general uh, for the limb. We add a limb, then authentication. Okay. Now this is the main part. So if I click here on authentication, you will see these are the different type of authentication mechanisms which BMC or which BMC RSSO follows. We can use SAML authentication. You know that's what is SAML. It is a normal, you know, authentication we do through uh, Active Directory. Then we have AR authentication. AR authentication is nothing but an authentication at the ER server. So you can mention AR host and AR port. 
So then if when I will try to log in, it will go to the ER server and it will authenticate. Similarly, we have another mechanisms like cert. Uh, this is something new which has been added. So I think it's a mechanism of uh, certificates. So you can authenticate a user from uh, a certain, you know, uh, using these this certificates which will be provided by your organization. So then similarly, we have LDAP. LDAP authentication I can do here. Uh, you can uh, if you want to uh, you know uh, enable a user who want you want to um, you know uh, authenticate him using an LDAP mechanism then you can do it from this section so here you will provide the host name for the LDAP then the port whether it's a secure or not then the bind user so you have to create first first of all you need to create a user in the LDAP and also one important thing you need to make sure that that uh, user does not expire on LDAP then you have to configure it here and then then user based DN so this will be provided by your you know um, AD admin because this is the certain directory in which it will search for the users and page sizing all it is related to AD like what is the same you know page sizing depends on what uh, the page sizing that have follows then uh, once you are done then you will save it here okay similarly we have other um, authentications like Kerberos, Prior, Local you can explore it Kerberos, I will tell you, Kerberos is an authentication mechanism which will basically, again, it is on a different mechanism um, um, done on, um, you know, Active Directory itself. But what it helps you is it, uh, it will automatically log you in. You don't have to provide your credentials. For example, if I set my LDAP, then when the user will log in, they will use their normal Windows credentials. For example, they will use their Windows username and Windows uh, password and I will authenticate them on Remedy or RSSO and then log them into the BMC Remedy or any other application on which I am using RSSO. But now, if <coughs> I am using Kerberos, the moment I hit this RSSO URL, it will take my credentials automatically from the Active Directory and will authenticate them. If it is authenticated, it will log me in. So I don't have to, you know, uh, I don't have to key in my credentials every time I hit the URL. So that is Kerberos for you. Then different mechanisms are there, you can uh, use it. Now, there is one more important thing called chaining. So chaining mechanism we have here, let's suppose uh, I am using an, uh, you know, uh, an RSSO with ITS. So some of my users are in uh, LDAP, but some of them are not. So what I can do, I can enable a chaining method and in the chaining I can define different uh, you know uh, authentications with uh, you know different levels for example I will define LDAP at level 1 and AR at level 2 so for example that when the user will hit the URL it will first check for the LDAP authentication for example it fails there if suppose that user is not in LDAP then it will check for the AR authentication and if let's suppose that user is added into my AR system, user form, it will validate it and log in into the system. Similarly, you can use it with different <coughs> mechanisms. You can also use Kerberos and LDAP. So in case the auto um, authentication fails, you can directly, uh, you know, use the uh, LDAP for uh, for him to log into the system. So this is this is called chaining mechanism, which you can define here. Then again, you can do branding. You can change your background image, company logo, product name and all that. You can customize your login page for the end users. This is all possible here in, um, uh, you know, uh, Remedy RSS. Now I will show you one important thing is this, how this chaining mechanism looks like. Sorry, just a minute. I think it's uh, somewhere here. No, not on this stuff. Okay, here you can see uh, the authentication which has been defined here. It is based, it's a chaining mechanism. So first, it has, uh, I think, AR, then it is pre-auth. So uh, that means these are the two uh, mechanisms which have been defined in chaining mode. Okay, so um, uh, you can also um, uh, bypass it for AR authentication. But suppose sometimes users are uh, using the 
users want to, uh, you know, the admin users want to log into the system by bypassing the RSS. So for that, you can define it here. So you can, you have your bypass URL, you can use that and then you can use your AR system credentials to log into the system. That also can be done here. So th this was the main part of uh, how we define the, um, uh, you know, RSS so for, uh, for end users. Similarly, in O, I think this section they have added it. So this is for um, uh, O2 authentication. You know that Windows has long, uh, a new uh, way mechanism of authenticating it uh, through, you know, those tokens. So you, if you are, um, auth you know, authenticating it, then you will get a token on your mobile and then you will key in the um, token and then you will be authenticated. Even for your Outlook or any Microsoft application you are using it. So that also can be uh, done here. So you can define your, uh, the you know, uh, you can define your authentication mechanism, mechanisms for this um, new authentication. Now, uh, if you want to check the sessions, uh, let's suppose there are users who are logged, in, uh, logged into the system using the RSSO that you can do here. So if you search for a particular user, then you will be able to see if that user is there or not. So you will be, it will get you the sessions which are, you know, uh, used here for a, um, you, um, sorry, the sessions which are being currently used by the people or people who are currently logged into the system. Then we have, uh, okay, this is the admin section. You can add your admin user here. If you want to add a new user, you can go here and uh, add admin user and you can add it. Tenant, I have already explained you what is this. You need to add a company organization for which, for which you are doing the authentication. So there are... Um, uh, some uh, you know you can uh, also define the uh, users for example let me search something if i am able to okay i need to i can uh, so if i have some local user and i can uh, want to define them that i can define here so i can add it from here i can add a local user and then uh, i can define it there but, but normally we are not using it because as you know global organizations they have uh, they directly rely on the AD authentication so you can explore it more there may be more options here which which will help you uh, but the basic main uh, you know uh, way of authenticating and configuring an RSSO I have explained you I hope you are um, you have liked this video and you are liking my videos so please comment uh, if in case I have missed anything, I will uh, reply in the comments or you can write to my on my email addresses and I will get back to you. Thank you. Thanks uh, for watching this video.